I'm Ben Lewis and I'm going to demonstrate some new capabilities that Dataverse has for displaying geospatial data. So there are three types of geospatial data that the Dataverse can store now and and also present maps for. One is tables that have latitudes and longitudes. Number two is shape files. And number three is tables that have a column containing a well-defined geographic area like zip code or census block uh, or FIPS code. Okay, so we're going to start with a table that has lat longs. I've created a data set in Dataverse. And I'm now going to uh, drag a CSV file, which is uh, some geo tweets. These are geolocated uh, tweets in which the tweeter, the tweet creators are mentioning the word Brexit. So I've dragged my CSV here, and now I'm going to save it. ingest in progress as Dataverse brings that table in and make sure make sure that it's a valid CSV table. Now I can edit my tags for this table now that it's loaded to Dataverse. So I come here to edit files, metadata, and it says select the file that you want to edit. So I go back here, edit metadata, edit tags, and the key piece here is to choose uh, a geospatial data tag for your geospatial data. This tells Dataverse that the data can be mapped. I'm going to save the changes. Save the changes. And now I have a map button next to my data. I can now click on this. It tells me that I need to publish my data before I can map it. That's because in order to map the data, Dataverse needs to send the data to world map in a way that is public. We don't currently have authentication between Dataverse and world map. Therefore, we need to publish our data before we can map it to make it clear that we're only mapping data which can be made public. Now we click on our map data again, our map button. Dataverse shows us the tabular structure of the data set that we uploaded. And now we tell Dataverse what kind of geospatial data it is. There's lat long, which is what this is. And I had mentioned shape files. And it's also possible to upload tables which have columns for census block, census track, or zip code. So we're going to select latitude, longitude. And then we're going to tell it specifically which column to use for latitude and which column to use for longitude. I'm going to submit data to WorldMap. It will send the data over to WorldMap and then present a map service of the data back in Dataverse. Now I'm in the Manage Map interface within Dataverse and I can do a number of things. I can go back to Dataverse. I can view map metadata within Dataverse. I can view this layer in world map and start using it in world map. I can download the data in a variety of formats and I can delete this mapped version of the data. I can also symbolize my data.
because this data is points and I don't have a meaningful numeric value for it, I'm not going to symbolize it now. Let's return to Dataverse and we now have the uh, choice to keep this map or to remove it. I'm going to keep it by continuing to Dataverse. And now I've got a thumbnail of this data set, the mapped version of the data next to my data. Now let's go here to uh, up one level to our data, uh, our data set level. And we see that we have one data table in our data set with a thumbnail. Now let's upload a shapefile and visualize that. So I'm now going to drag a zip compressed shapefile over into Dataverse and it's uploaded it. I'm going to save the changes. And Dataverse knows that this is a geospatial data set without having to identify a tag for it. It just knows it because it knows that shapefiles are geospatial. So here we have our, our map uh, button all ready to go. So I'm going to click on that and I'm reminded that I need to publish the data before I can map it. This data set is a set of administrative boundaries with a value for the number of tweets which mentioned Brexit within that fell within each uh, boundary for a particular time period. Now I can click on Visualize in World Map and it's going to load the data to World Map and as before present a, a map service back to Dataverse for visualizing the data. Now we have the same controls that we had with our lat long table and we also have a meaningful value for symbolizing. We have the number of tweets per administrative boundary. So I'm going to select my attribute, num points. I'm going to choose my classification method. I'm going to choose Jenks, natural breaks. I'm going to choose the number of intervals. I'm going to bump it up to six. And I'm going to select my color range for, for representing the num points values as blue. And I'm going to apply changes. So the darker the blue, the greater the number of Brexit tweets for this time period. Now let's return to Dataverse. We're going to keep our map. We can see we have now a nice preview of our, of our spatial data set. Let's go up to the data set level and look at both of our tables here. So we've got, uh, we've got our original um, lat long table and we have our shape file also just loaded to world map to visualize. Now we have a third type of data that we can load to Dataverse and visualize in world map. And that is tables which have a column for a well-known geometry. So we're going to now drag a table which has uh, information by block groups in Boston to our upload area. I'm going to save the changes. Okay. Now, world map doesn't yet know that this block group information is geospatial. So we need to edit our tags. And we have to tell it 
which file that we want to edit tags for. So the key tag that we need to edit in order to map the data is the tabular data tag. We need to tell it that there's a geospatial data tag for tabular data. You can select other types of tags, but this is the critical one for mapping. So I'm going to save the changes. And now we see we have a map button for our tabular data block group data set. Of course, I'm going to need to publish it before I map it. <coughs> now let's map it. Dataverse shows us the structure of the table that we just uploaded. And now we're going to select block group as the geospatial data type. We're going to select BGID, block group ID, as the block group ID that we're going to want to join to the block group geometry in world map. And world map only has one layer for block group geometry, which is called 2015 Census Block Groups Boston. Okay, now we're going to submit this block group data set to world map. It's going to send the tabular data to world map. World map is going to join it to its spatial, uh, the spatial uh, geometry that it has for block groups, and it presents this map back as a map service to Dataverse. Now let's take variable, say police. We'll say quantile, inter intervals 5, shades of red, apply. Oops, sorry, shades of blue. Shades of red, okay. and let's go back to Dataverse. We're going to keep our map. And now we have three different types of data that can be loaded to Dataverse and visualized in world map. For a PowerPoint presentation and sample data sets, for uploading and mapping in, in Dataverse, go to the Harvard CGA 2018 DataFest workshop data set. Thank you.